Hey everybody, welcome to Workforce Gaming. I'm Brad, here with Doug. Hey. This is a weird one, but mm -hmm. Hideo Kojima just had a documentary released about himself and also kind of the creating of Death Stranding. We'll get into it. Yeah. Um, called Hideo Kojima Connecting Worlds. It's on Disney Plus, Hulu. I'm not... They, they're like, I watched it on Disney Plus. It said Hulu. I don't know how those things go together at this point. Not yeah. our area of expertise. <laughs> sure. So... Both of us, um, I think huge Metal Gear Solid fans. I love Death Stranding yeah. coming out of that. Um, you're actually weirdly in the middle of playing Death Stranding when you yes. watch this finally. So yeah, yep. Uh, I thought it was an it was an interesting documentary. It was very oddly told. I felt like, but yeah. um, we just thought it'd be interesting just to kind of talk about what we kind of gained from this, what it was about, all that kind of things. A little bit different than normal here. So yeah, your overall take on this documentary. I think this documentary is good if you have no familiarity with Kojima. Um, yes. It's like very <laughs> Kojima 101, um, mm -hmm. which is fine. Um, it felt a little bit like a fluff piece. And like it immediately opens with <laughs> like that literally starts with the PlayStation Studios logo filed by the Kojima Productions logo. And yeah. then it's like. This is the story of Kojima. It's like, ah, uh, I don't know if you can make it's, an unbiased it's, look at. <laughs> it, it's definitely, it definitely comes off as like a, here's promotion for Kojima and Death yes. Stranding. We're not, there is yeah. not a negative note in this. This is very much a like, here is why Kojima is great. And I think what you said is interesting because I felt like this was very much for somebody who's like mildly interested in video games. Just yes. a lot of the way they talk about video games in this is like, oh yeah, like, Video games have always just been shoot, 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 violence, 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 yeah. kill, kill, kill. But then Kojima came along and made a war game where, like, that's only one of the aspects. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he made, like, an extremely violent five-game series um, and then decided not to do that anymore. I mean, it's – and the thing is, like, I feel like we're going to sound negative, but it's, like, it's really strange because it feels like the people – I think actually, I think my major issue with the documentary is the people they interview are largely people who don't work with him and people who – may have only played death stranding or like have some familiar with like his previous games it just didn't seem like the people they were interviewing were like people who were close to kojima in any way yeah. so they, they, they interview well, like a, a lot of direct like like why are we why are we interviewing grimes and nicholas reffin and Gabriel Toro actually did seem to know a little bit more about kojima yeah, than the average person uh, uh, <laughs> and i think i texted you this at one as i was watching it's like anytime and somebody speaks english in this thing just yeah. the quality of content that's being said drops a lot oh, yeah, with, the, with, yeah. with the exception of guillermo del toro he actually seemed like he kind of had some semblance of an idea of what the bigger picture here was but yeah it just seemed like so much like 101 and just like if you're gonna get like a shinji mikami to come and talk about this yeah and like literally oh, yeah. his line in the film is like oh mr kojima he loves movies and it's like no 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 like you are like you are both like very influential directors who came out around yes. the same period in time let's talk about your processes let's talk about where you came from and it's just like oh yeah no i know kojima he likes movies and then we get the like 10 minute piece on how film's such an inspiration to him and all this other stuff that again yeah. if you know kojima you kind of have that that piece there i do think like you said it's it's very much a you've heard this name you've seen it on a box like who is this guy versus yeah. a like something for me and you probably people who are listening to this if you regularly follow our channel about video games you probably have a little bit bigger picture of who kojima is already yeah and you're looking for something a step past this y yeah i i just it felt i, I think the thing you're talking about when they brought like mikami on they also brought mitsuguchi on the guy who does yep. like res and stuff who makes like non-violent games it's it's just like it felt like it just feels like largely like a wasted opportunity <laughs> i think it's mostly how i felt about it yes because some of the names they were bringing in was like really cool they had like a split second interview with the guy who does all of the artwork for all of his games yeah he, he actually had some like really interesting things to say and um i remember like one time like he he was the one who was kind of like I feel like when like the English speakers were talking like, oh, it's so interesting and crazy that he's so prophetic. And then like when they asked the guy who does like all his illustrations, he's like, yeah, it's kind of like creepy. I don't know if I like it or not. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. like, yeah, just... he's like, I work on these things as well. And it's like concerning. It's, it is just like a more interesting <laughs> thing than going, oh, this guy is a genius. This guy's a genius. And like the people who worked with him is like, even Kojima himself, like he appears like he's when you see like his like Twitter and stuff and how people talk about it, it seems like, Oh, a guy who's very full of himself. And when they do interviews with him, he's just like a guy who's very confident, but he doesn't seem yeah. as full of himself as like other people are about him. It's, I don't know. Yes. It, was, it just, and it was just, it was just very interesting kind of going back and forth between like 
the people who were actually directly connected with Kojima, where it was actually really interesting. And then, like you said, like they brought in the guy who created Resident Evil 2 and 4 to say he likes movies. It's like, <laughs> like, ah, uh, let's just get some more meat on that. And then, like, let's instead have, you know, whoever talk about how awesome he is. Yeah. Yeah. I do think, too, the one thing that stood out to me is it felt very disconnected just because I think when you got was you got a lot of these people who worked on Death Stranding yeah. talking about that. But then we'd get, like, these random people just talking about Kojima himself. And it yeah. just was so just this, like, hodgepodge of things where it's like we couldn't... Uh, we couldn't get Sony to finance a 60 minute documentary just yeah. about Kojima. But if we throw in some death stranding, it's like a little free promotion for death stranding and DS two <laughs> yeah. coming out. Like then we'll finance this thing. We can do it. So it just kind of felt like this, like weird, like, is it about death stranding? Is it about Kojima? Cause there's some cool stuff from Kojima about like how he grew up, like really involved in books. And he talks yeah. about, you know, his parents in the war and how that kind of influenced some of his anti-war, anti-nuclear. T- there's some really interesting stuff there. But it's just like set aside and it's like, oh yeah, Death Stranding, we wanted to paint the thing red because that makes the player see that. And it's like, okay, yeah. It's, it's two half documentaries that yes. are also done in half the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's two... a 55 minute, <laughs> yeah. two part documentary interspliced together and interwoven. So, yes, there was no, there, I feel like it's like if you had followed one of these through lines, like all mm-hmm. the way through, it would have been, it just would have been like much more interesting. Um, I will say, though, as a guy who's playing through Death Stranding, this does have some, like, really crazy Death Stranding spoilers, like, right in the middle of it, so I recommend. <laughs> yeah, they're not at the end either, because I thought forward. that, too, like, there, there's one point in the middle where it literally is, like, showing characters in the game dying, and it's like, oh, I, I haven't played Death Stranding in a few years, but I'm pretty sure that's a big moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, my review is not... I, I fast forward through 10 minutes of the of the, of the movie, uh, but I just, yeah. like, just, a, just as a heads-up sort of thing. It did actually make me... It, in interesting ways, it does make me kind of appreciate Death Stranding. It does. It did remind me a lot of like, I feel like now we're like, oh yeah, Death Stranding is kind of that that weird game that like you know that Kojima made. But for a long time, nobody knew what it was, and like was having a really yeah. hard time explaining it because I remember they kept talking about this like stick. He kept he kept talking about stick and rope, and like mm-hmm. nobody knew what that knew, nobody knew what that meant. And we only had like really vague trailers. So I think it did. I think it did at least talk a little bit about like what was happening beforehand of just like making it a hard game to explain. I mean, I think now even now playing it, it's like oh, this is still like a pretty wholly unique game, and it came out like yeah. seven years ago. I think actually I think it was like um, it was interesting. One of the English speakers, I think it was either like Churches or Wood Kid. They kind of point out it's like it feels like the heart of an indie game um in a triple a setting and like a triple yeah. a sort of thing and like it did make me kind of appreciate death stranding that way i just i would have liked to learn a lot more about Death stranding there's there's and like kind of a little bit on the back to like it's two halves of a documentary they don't talk about konami stuff like at all like he mentions all, prior all. company like three <laughs> times very much at the beginning when he's talking about like starting this indie studio is like the prior company i worked for yeah. i had to be concerned about their profits and their stockholders and now i'm indie so it's just me and yeah. it's just prior company and it's like yes i worked somewhere else i worked on a game before like i don't think yeah. i don't even know if metal gear solid gets dropped as like a name in this no remember. they just they just say like from the creator of metal gear, they, they mentioned metal gear solid one through five but yeah like like if this is a movie about Kojima Productions, you should probably talk a little bit about how Kojima Productions started. If this is a movie about Kojima, maybe talk about his whole career, not just the parts that are like that nicely fit into a PlayStation Productions documentary. Yeah. If this is a documentary about Death Stranding, maybe make the story about Death Stranding, and that's just kind of where it kept coming back yeah, to. Just, you know? Yeah. The one one not to jump back negative, the one thing I will say about this that I didn't like is I feel like this very much talked down to the rest of the industry. Like, oh yeah absolutely all the time it was, it was <laughs> really weird. it was so weird like there were parts where it's like oh yeah he had this crazy idea where like, you just go in an environment and you look around and it's like those have been games for like 20 like 30 years yeah. there have been games where you just go wander around and you explore things and it's just like oh yeah every other game like it's just so violent and what if you did a game without violence and it's like yeah those those existed before death stranding it's just yeah and there's just lots of like, oh yeah, like Kojima's the only person who thinks like this, and he's the only one who can do. And yes, like he, I love Metal Gear Solid, love Death Stranding. He yeah. makes some wholly unique games, but it's just it talks about it like he is the one and only person yeah. who's not. I think it's I think it was Grimes, is that her name? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it was yeah. I think it was her who's like everybody else is just doing remakes and remasters and kojima's doing this brand new thing it's like no 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 it just it spoke a lot like people who 
to my mind, it just it seemed like it was like, hey, if you've only played Fortnite, Call of Duty, Halo, Destiny, yeah, check out what this dude is doing because it's crazy and, compared and, and, yes, to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you know the bigger space, you know what's going on in the industry, like you know, like okay, there's literally thousands of other games that have pieces and parts of what Death Stranding is. Now, yeah, again, Death exactly. Stranding is this very wholly unique product, but you can see influences of other things in it. Yeah, it it is. Yes, and it's the people who were yeah, and like you said, the people who were talking down are people who are not necessarily in the games industry, um, except for maybe Jeff Keeley. Who? <laughs> oh my god! Every I okay. I see this. I like Jeff Keeley until he has anything to do with Kojima because yeah, like yeah. it's literally like I, it, it sounds like some kid like trying to defend his dad. Where it's, it's like, but yeah. my dad does this, and like, yeah, but so does everybody else's dad. Yeah, but my dad, yeah. like, it just very much comes off as like. He's the only one. I don't know. I just <laughs> and, it's, and it was super weird. And like I'm playing through Death Stranding now. We talked a little bit about this, but like Jeff Keeley is in Death Stranding as yeah. like a fanboy of of Kojima, Kojima. Of, and it's like yeah. and it's like weird and awkward in the way that Jeff Keeley is like weird and awkward. But yeah, it's like it's like you can celebrate this guy without putting it on the industry. Although my although I, my dad watched it. And I had some other people. So my dad, who does only play Destiny, he's like, so where do I get Death Stranding again? Like he was just like interested <laughs> in it. I was like, I yeah. think it's I think it is like a really and maybe you do need sort of those people who aren't super familiar with the industry, so you can't drill down as much. Maybe just having a high level one, like we were talking about, it's like this. Actually, I'd be super curious of somebody who just watches movies and has no context for it, or somebody who like lightly knows about video games. Like you probably, they, the less you know about video games, the more you get out of this. I think. I think so. Yeah, I definitely yeah. don't think it's it's definitely not trying to explain like the game making process or like yeah. the creative input on this and how things come together. It's, it's definitely not that. It's not like a history lesson in those ways. I did think there were some interesting things that I don't think I really knew about before mm -hmm. that I came that I kind of picked out of here. Um, I feel like maybe I knew this when Death Stranding came out, but like Sony just blank checked him basically. Was yeah, like, that was crazy. Yeah, dude, like we don't need you to pitch a game. Don't pitch a game to us. Just here's your money. Go yeah. make what you want. Don't even tell us, which I think is is shocking. Like I don't think I knew that, but just a company that size with that many like risk factors, especially when you look at Sony now where it's like, yeah. everything seems like it's like, okay, it's in the Sony. Like we said, PlayStation game, you know what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just to go like, here's some money, go make something crazy and you get death stranding out of it. Kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I also, he said that the division in the world, cause he said he started production on this in like 2015. So like the division in the world yeah. kind of leading into this. And then they talked a little bit about kind of it being like, a COVID game before coded kind of that prophetic yeah. thing that you were talking about. I thought that was all very, very interesting. It, it is like, I remember people talking about that and playing it now. It is like it, when people are like, Oh, it's a game about COVID. I was like, all right, all right. It's like very prophetic, but, but like playing it now, it is a little spooky. It's like a little spooky. <laughs> about Hacker. And the thing I thought that was really funny is that death stranding two, he rewrote after COVID. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I'm like really curious. I'm, I'm like I'm hoping one day that comes out about what his story was before and after uh, COVID. Like if they made a like a documentary about it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but get the guys who did Psych Odyssey to do it, not the not Kojima Productions themselves. To do yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what else you have, but the other thing that I thought, and I think this is very interesting for where he is now, and it was towards the end yeah. of the documentary. He says. One of the things in my life right now that's kind of getting with me is I just turned 59 and I'm a little bit scared of all the different ideas I have in my head right now and getting them yeah. out. And I think that like just instantly put context to the fact that this dude has announced like three or four games in like the last like 18 months. Oh, yeah, that's true. And, and a movie I, and two movies. Yeah. I think Death Stranding and whatever that not MG. Whatever the other is. one is that I can't <laughs> say the name. But I don't really know. Or yeah, something. It just, yeah. I, I thought that was interesting that it's like, OK, you like see like, OK, like I these things are taking me five to 10 years to make. Like yeah. I probably, if I'm doing one at a time, I probably only have two, three left in me. But if I just start going like batshit crazy on this, maybe I can get out these four or five, six, seven ideas I still have left in my head, which I thought that was kind yeah. of a weird, interesting thought to have of like, okay, I get it. We announced the Microsoft game. We announced the weird faces game. We announced Death Stranding 2. We announced the weird action movie. Like it's okay. That's an interesting way to kind of think about where he's at headspace wise and why he's doing it the way he's doing it versus what we've always said before just you know sort of metal gear solid four metal gear solid five <laughs> death stranding like just yeah yeah boom, boom, that, boom. oh that is interesting. yeah he's like moved to like a multi-project thing because it, yeah it's like <laughs> that is an interesting way to look at it it's like i got i gotta get these in before i before i go sort of thing mm -hmm. um it, it was really the i think that on that point too it seemed like he didn't talk about any sort of succession or anything like that. It's like, if you watch other gaming documentaries, I always talk about like, oh, we're trying to like get other people into creative leads yep. and stuff. And it was like, 
I don't think there was any of that talk. And the coach team was like, no, these are my games. My name's on the box. Do you see my name on the box? <laughs> you don't see their name on the box. My yeah. name's on the box. What's the name of this company? Me Productions. <laughs> <laughs> and not to say that he's like full yeah. of himself and everything else, but I do yeah. think that like when you look at um, like God of War even where you had like Corey Balrog on God of War. Okay, we moved it on to the next person for the next one. You kind of get these cycling directors coming through to kind yeah. of lend their vision to it and kind of build that talent in the studio where this is just like, yeah. no, when I'm out, we're out. Yeah, there's no Kojima Productions without Koji. I know that sounds silly, but like I think he's like, I think that's it. I think he's like, when I'm done, everybody's done. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But really interesting documentary. I think I don't, I don't know if I enjoyed it or not. It's just, it's, it's yeah. weird. It was a very weird thing to watch and a very interesting thing that just randomly pops up on your Disney Plus out of nowhere. So. Give it a look, check it out. But we are Workforce Gaming. We normally talk about games, kind of game adjacent here. But um, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below. You can support us on Coffee below as well. We'll see you later. Bye.